Laozi, UK, US, Chinese, Laozi literally, old master. Also rendered as Lao Tzu or and Lao Tze was an ancient Chinese philosopher and writer. He is the reputed author of the Tao Te Ching, the founder of philosophical Taoism, and a deity in religious Taoism and traditional Chinese religions. A semi-legendary figure, Laozi was usually portrayed as a 6th century BC contemporary of Confucius, but some modern historians consider him to have lived during the Warring States period of the 4th century BC. A central figure in Chinese culture, Laozi is claimed by both the emperors of the Tang dynasty and modern people of the Li surname as a founder of their lineage. Laozi's work has been embraced by both various anti-authoritarian movements and Chinese legalism. Topic: <laughs> Names. In traditional accounts, Laozi's personal name is usually given as Li Er, Li Er Old Asterisk Rn Mod, Li Er, and his courtesy name as Bo Yang Trad. Bo Yank Simp. Bo Yank Old Asterisk P Rak Lang, Mod. Bo Yank. A prominent posthumous name was Li Dan, Li Dan Li Dan, Laozi itself is a honorific title, Lao Old Asterisk Ru. Old, Venerable. And Z Old Asterisk Ts. Master. It has been romanized numerous ways, sometimes leading to confusion. The most common present form is Laozi or Laozi, based on the Hanyu Pinyin system adopted by mainland China in 1958 and by Taiwan in 2009. During the 20th century, Lao Tzu was more common, based on the formerly prevalent Wade Giles system. In the 19th century, the title was usually romanized as Lao Tzu. Other forms include the variants Lao Tze and Lao Su. As a religious figure, he is worshipped under the name Supreme Old Lord Tai Shang Lao Jun, Tai Shang Lao Jun, and as one of the Three Pure Ones. During the Tang Dynasty, he was granted the title Supremely Mysterious and Primordial Emperor. Tai Shang Zuan Yuan Huang Dai, Tai Shang Xuan Yuan Huang Di. Topic. Historical views In the mid-20th century, a consensus emerged among scholars that the historicity of the person known as Laozi is doubtful and that the Tao Te Ching was a compilation of Taoist sayings by many hands. Alan Watts urged more caution, holding that this view was part of an academic fashion for skepticism about historical spiritual and religious figures and stating that not enough would be known for years, or possibly ever, to make a firm judgment. The earliest certain reference to the present figure of Laozi is found in the 1st century BC records of the Grand Historian collected by the historian Sima Qian from earlier accounts. In one account, Laozi was said to be a contemporary of Confucius during the 6th or 5th century BC. His surname was Li and his personal name was Er or Dan. He was an official in the imperial archives and wrote a book in two parts before departing to the West. In another, Laozi was a different contemporary of Confucius titled Lao Lazy Lao and wrote a book in 15 parts. In a third, he was the court astrologer Lao Dan who lived during the 4th century BC reign of Duke Xian of the Qin dynasty. The oldest text of the Tao Te Ching so far recovered was written on bamboo slips and dates to the late 4th century BC, see Guodian Chu slips. According to traditional accounts, Laozi was a scholar who worked as the keeper of the archives for the royal court of Zhou. This reportedly allowed him broad access to the works of the Yellow Emperor and other classics of the time. The stories assert that Laozi never opened a formal school but nonetheless attracted a large number of students and loyal disciples. There are many variations of a story retelling his encounter with Confucius, most famously in the Zhuangzi, he was sometimes held to have come from the village of Chu Zhen in Chu. In accounts where Laozi married, he was said to have had a son named Zong who became a celebrated soldier. The story tells of Zong the warrior who defeats the enemy and triumphs, and then abandons the corpses of the enemy soldiers to be eaten by vultures. 
By coincidence Lao traveling and teaching the way of the Tao, comes on the scene and is revealed to be the father of Zong, from whom he was separated in childhood. Lao tells his son that it is better to treat respectfully a beaten enemy, and that the disrespect to their dead would cause his foes to seek revenge. Convinced, Zong orders his soldiers to bury the enemy dead. Funeral mourning is held for the dead of both parties and a lasting peace is made. Many clans of the Li family trace their descent to Laozi, including the emperors of the Tang dynasty. This family was known as the Longxi Li lineage. Longxi Li, according to the Simpkinses, while many, if not all, of these lineages are questionable, they provide a testament to Laozi's impact on Chinese culture. The third story in Sima Qian states that Laozi grew weary of the moral decay of life in Chengzhou and noted the kingdom's decline. He ventured west to live as a hermit in the unsettled frontier at the age of 80. At the western gate of the city or kingdom, he was recognized by the guard Yingxi. The sentry asked the old master to record his wisdom for the good of the country before he would be permitted to pass. The text Laozi wrote was said to be the Tao Te Ching, although the present version of the text includes additions from later periods. In some versions of the tale, the sentry was so touched by the work that he became a disciple and left with Laozi, never to be seen again. In others, the old master journeyed all the way to India and was the teacher of Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha. Others say he was the Buddha himself. A 7th century work, the Sandong Junang, Pearly Bag of the Three Caverns, embellished the relationship between Laozi and Yingxi. Laozi pretended to be a farmer when reaching the western gate, but was recognized by Ying Si, who asked to be taught by the great master. Laozi was not satisfied by simply being noticed by the guard and demanded an explanation. Ying Si expressed his deep desire to find the Tao and explained that his long study of astrology allowed him to recognize Laozi's approach. Ying Si was accepted by Laozi as a disciple. This is considered an exemplary interaction between Taoist master and disciple, reflecting the testing a seeker must undergo before being accepted. A would-be adherent is expected to prove his determination and talent, clearly expressing his wishes and showing that he had made progress on his own towards realizing the Tao. The pearly bag of the three caverns continues the parallel of an adherent's quest. Ying Si received his ordination when Laozi transmitted the Tao Te Ching, along with other texts and precepts, just as Taoist adherents receive a number of methods, teachings and scriptures at ordination. This is only an initial ordination and Ying Si still needed an additional period to perfect his virtue, thus Laozi gave him three years to perfect his Tao. Ying Si gave himself over to a full-time devotional life. After the appointed time, Yingxi again demonstrates determination and perfect trust, sending out a black sheep to mark it as the agreed sign. He eventually meets again with Laozi, who announces that Yingxi's immortal name is listed in the heavens and calls down a heavenly procession to clothe Yingxi in the garb of immortals. The story continues that Laozi bestowed a number of titles upon Yingxi and took him on a journey throughout the universe, even into the nine heavens. After this fantastic journey, the two sages set out to western lands of the barbarians. The training period, reuniting and travels represent the attainment of the highest religious rank in medieval Taoism called Preceptor of the Three Caverns. In this legend, Laozi is the perfect Taoist master and Yingxi is the ideal Taoist student. Laozi is presented as the Tao personified, giving his teaching to humanity for their salvation. Ying Si follows the formal sequence of preparation, testing, training, and attainment. The story of Laozi has taken on strong religious overtones since the Han Dynasty. As Taoism took root, Laozi was worshipped as a god. Belief in the revelation of the Tao from the divine Laozi resulted in the formation of the Way of the Celestial Masters, the first organized religious Taoist sect. In later mature Taoist tradition, Laozi came to be seen as a personification of the Tao. He is said to have undergone numerous transformations and taken on various guises in various incarnations throughout history to initiate the faithful in the way. Religious Taoism often holds that the 
old master did not disappear after writing the Tao Te Ching but rather spent his life traveling and revealing the Tao. Taoist myths state that Lao Tzu was conceived when his mother gazed upon a falling star. He supposedly remained in her womb for 62 years before being born while his mother was leaning against a plum tree. The Chinese surname Li shares its character with Plum. Lao Tzu was said to have emerged as a grown man with a full gray beard and long earlobes, both symbols of wisdom and long life. Other myths state that he was reborn 13 times after his first life during the days of Fuxi. In his last incarnation as Lao Tzu, he lived 990 years and spent his life traveling to reveal the Tao. Topic: <laughs> Tao teaching. Lao Tzu is traditionally regarded as the author of the Tao Te Ching, Tao Te Ching though the identity of its authors or compilers has been debated throughout history. It is one of the most significant treatises in Chinese cosmogony. As with most other ancient Chinese philosophers, Lao Tzu often explains his ideas by way of paradox, analogy, appropriation of ancient sayings, repetition, symmetry, rhyme, and rhythm. In fact, the whole book can be read as an analogy, the ruler is the awareness, or self, in meditation and the myriad creatures or empire is the experience of the body, senses and desires. The Tao Te Ching, often called simply Lao Tzu after its reputed author, describes the Tao, or Tao as the source and ideal of all existence. It is unseen, but not transcendent, immensely powerful yet supremely humble, being the root of all things. People have desires and free will and thus are able to alter their own nature. Many act unnaturally, upsetting the natural balance of the Tao. The Tao teaching intends to lead students to a return to their natural state, in harmony with Tao. Language and conventional wisdom are critically assessed. Taoism views them as inherently biased and artificial, widely using paradoxes to sharpen the point. Livia Cohn provides an example of how Lao Tzu encouraged a change in approach, or return to nature, rather than action. Technology may bring about a false sense of progress. The answer provided by Lao Tzu is not the rejection of technology, but instead seeking the calm state of Wu Wei, free from desires. This relates to many statements by Lao Tzu encouraging rulers to keep their people in ignorance or simple-minded. Some scholars insist this explanation ignores the religious context, and others question it as an apologetic of the philosophical coherence of the text. It would not be unusual political advice if Lao Tzu literally intended to tell rulers to keep their people ignorant. However, some terms in the text, such as Valley spirit, gushin, and soul, po, bear a metaphysical context and cannot be easily reconciled with a purely ethical reading of the work. Wu Wei, Wu Wei literally, non action, or not acting, is a central concept of the Tao Te Ching. The concept of Wu Wei is multifaceted, and reflected in the word's multiple meanings, even in English translation, it can mean not doing anything not forcing, not acting, in the theatrical sense, creating nothingness, acting spontaneously, and flowing with the moment. It is a concept used to explain Ziran, Ziran or harmony with the Tao. It includes the concepts that value distinctions are ideological and seeing ambition of all sorts as originating from the same source. Lao Tzu used the term broadly with simplicity and humility as key virtues, often in contrast to selfish action. On a political level, it means avoiding such circumstances as war, harsh laws and heavy taxes. Some Taoists see a connection between Wu Wei and esoteric practices, such as Zuowang, sitting in oblivion, emptying the mind of bodily awareness and thought found in the Zhuangzi. Topic. Taoism Lao Tzu is traditionally regarded as the founder of Taoism, intimately connected with the Tao Te Ching and primordial or original Taoism. Popular religious 
Taoism typically presents the Jade Emperor as the official head deity. Intellectual, elite, Taoists, such as the Celestial Masters sect, usually present Laozi, Lao Lord Lao, and the three pure ones at the top of the pantheon of deities. Topic: <inaudible> Influence. Potential officials throughout Chinese history drew on the authority of non-Confucian sages, especially Laozi and Zhuangzi, to deny serving any ruler at any time. Zhuangzi, Laozi's most famous follower in traditional accounts, had a great deal of influence on Chinese literati and culture. Political theorists influenced by Laozi have advocated humility in leadership and a restrained approach to statecraft, either for ethical and pacifist reasons, or for tactical ends. In a different context, various anti-authoritarian movements have embraced the Laozi teachings on the power of the weak. Laozi was a proponent of limited government. Left libertarians in particular have been influenced by Laozi. In his 1937 book Nationalism and Culture, the anarcho-syndicalist writer and activist Rudolf Rocker praised Laozi's gentle wisdom and understanding of the opposition between political power and the cultural activities of the people and community. In his 1910 article for the Encyclopaedia Britannica, Peter Kropotkin also noted that Lauza was among the earliest proponents of essentially anarchist concepts. More recently, anarchists such as John P. Clarke and Ursula K. Le Guin have written about the conjunction between anarchism and Taoism in various ways, highlighting the teachings of Lauza in particular. In her rendition of the Tao Te Ching, Le Guin writes that Lauza does not see political power as magic. He sees rightful power as earned and wrongful power as usurped. He sees sacrifice of self or others as a corruption of power, and power as available to anyone who follows the way. No wonder anarchists and Taoists make good friends. The right libertarian economist Murray Rothbard suggested that Lauser was the first libertarian, likening Lauser's ideas on government to Friedrich Hayek's theory of spontaneous order. James A. Dorn agreed, writing that Lauser, like many 18th-century liberals, argued that minimizing the role of government and letting individuals develop spontaneously would best achieve social and economic harmony. Similarly, the Cato Institute's David Boaz includes passages from the Tao Te Ching in his 1997 book The Libertarian Reader. Philosopher Roderick Long, however, argues that libertarian themes in Taoist thought are actually borrowed from earlier Confucian writers. <laughs> 